Hi and welcome to Score Game and to another episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank you guys for watching my videos, it really means a lot to me. If you want to support the channel even more, a like and a comment is always welcome. Let's play some Gwent. Okay, so where should we go next? I think we should check what's inside this encampment over here. And then we're gonna check this village. Something is going on here. Hello guys. Just gonna take your resources and leave. Okay, we have another puzzle battle over here. And point of interest. The Nilfgaardian invasion necessitated certain steps. Neve had dispatched scrolls to her garrison commanders, based upon which they were to announce general musters. She'd hoped that by the time she reached Crydam, fresh recruits would be waiting to join her growing force. Alas, the commander of this fort, one Sergeant Griggs, had only bad news. Your Majesty, I've not the numbers to man the walls even. The call to arms brings few new recruits, and more men desert each day. Folk are terrified something awful. They don't believe in victory. Make a speech. Press townsmen into service. Offer more soldiers pay. They don't believe in victory? The queen rose from behind the table, toppling her chair. Then let them hear how I smashed the blacklads at Dravagrad. Quick as can be, the commander gathered all Crydam's inhabitants in the central square. Neve stepped out in front of the crowd and recounted her most recent victory. The folk of Crydam listened with bated breath. And so, we must stand together, fight arm in arm, be a wall, a wall against which black-clad hordes will be dashed! The townsfolk responded with thunderous applause. Yet enthusiasm is rarely long-lived. That born of Meave's fiery words had dispersed after but a few days. No new volunteers joined the garrison, and the townsfolk hid from Sergeant Griggs to avoid being pressed into service. Neither the towns nor the Queen's own company were reinforced, and Meave left Crydam angry as a wasp. Okay then, but how is my morale high if I left angry? Pretty weird. I guess because I made that speech. But apparently that was the wrong choice. I should have gave them money. I don't know. Giving giving them money doesn't really solve anything. They could just take the money and desert. No will to fight makes the common folk no will, no spirit at all. I mean, if they don't believe in victory, giving them money won't make them believe in victory. No will to fight makes the common folk no will, no spirit at all. A dragon! A live one! Seen it with my own eyes! If the most recent victory didn't convince them we can win this, that just means they're cowards. Not gonna waste any money on cowards. Okay, what do I have here? More resources. And where's the dragon? Is that the dragon? Yeah, that's the dragon. A dragon! I've won't seen it with my own eyes. I'd winged like a bat and a mess of tea. I guess we're gonna fight a dragon. This doesn't really look like a dragon. More like a wyvern or something. Yeah, this totally doesn't look like a dragon. The serpent of Forgate. The wyvern that prowled the fields of Forgate was first spotted by Malek, a local halfwit. 
He has been busy carving obscene words into a birch stump by the roadside when the Dragonic suddenly pierced the clouds above him. After hastily and ineffectually cleaning his soiled trousers with a fern leaf, he rushed to the village to warn the others of the vicious beast's presence. He killed the wyvern, if there are no cows left, lose the battle. And only one round. Custom deck. Okay, protect the cows. Kill the wyvern. Easy enough. Hopefully. Every two turns on turn start, consume a random cow. Imagine a cross between a winged snake and a nightmare. Wyverns are worse. A winged snake and a nightmare. So every two turns he consumes a cow, so we need to kill it in like five uh, in ten turns. Okay, we have a uh, wagon burgs, arbalists that aren't uh, really leveled up. War wagon and Reinhardt. I mean, we're obviously gonna play wagon burgs first, right? Oh my god, but wagon burgs also target the cows. So what? I need to be lucky. I don't have moves ability. Okay, Brentley was lucky. This was ultra easy. Or what? This was the easiest one so far. Okay. And it was an overkill. Few remedies exist for a man who has lost his youthful vigor. The recommended solution is a simple mixture of raw dragon egg, a sprinkle of sugar and a splash of pepper vodka. Should no dragon eggs be readily available, instead boil the liver of a cockatrice after first messaging in a blend of Zerakenian spices. Okay, nothing else around here. Something's wrong at Abbott's Ravine. I heard whinnies and screams at first. How all's gone silent. Mm. Why ever do the gods punish us so? To be cast out by Nilfgaard, and now to face beasts. Night on the high road, a day afore last, claim the beasts called a girly Cora or some such. Why ever do the gods punish us so? A contract on a monster. Interesting. A Witcher contract? Is there anything else around here? Uh, apparently, I missed a loot. Okay. Let's go get it. I guess that's it. Your Grace, in the cottage lives a herbalist whom the local peasants hold in high regard. Her potions and ointments have healed many wounds. Saved many lives. Do you wish to procure remedies from her stock? Of course. 
Okay, this card looks interesting. Okay, we're gonna fight a, a monster in that area or something. A real dragon. My lady, the homeless resident, a peasant by the name of Bogan, has word for you. He claims he saw someone under cover of night, bury some sort of treasure near the orchard. For a small sum, he's offered to sketch a map of where to look. Very well. Pay what he's asked, or he'll make the map, but at no cost. Have him lashed, should he refuse. <laughs> Tell him I have no interest in it. Can we not find it without his help, without the map? Let's see if we can find it without his map. I don't really want to pay him and I don't want to force him to give me the map either. Wait, how do I go here? Oh. How many resources? Okay, I still don't know how to go there. Maybe through here? Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's see what's happening here. As Meave and company traversed the ruddy meadows, strident voices reached their ears. I beg your pardon. I've heard enough. A duel. I challenge you to a duel. A duel? Nonsense. I'd sooner lay you across my lap and give your ass a thorough flailing, you scoundrel. The Queen approached the arguing parties. Two nobles, Lords Cartwright and Mansfield. Quickly, she ascertained they were up in arms over ownership of an orchard lying between their estates. Assisting both nobles, their kinsmen, armed to the teeth, prepared to leap at each other and crush heads. Upon spotting Meave, the lords lowered their voices, bowed and presented themselves. Yet they could not keep their ire fettered long and were soon casting aspersions again. Y your Grace, Mansfield has seized it. No, no, stolen my land. Land that has been in my family for generations. It is my recompense for your reckless deeds. To burn down me mill in Furchin for a bit of sawdust in your flour? Well, I never. A bit? A bit? Oh, let me at him. Farmhands taken ill, cooks feverish, all from that manure. You are a fraud, sir. A fraud and a thief. Though she faced the not at all trifling matter of the Nilf Guardian invasion, Meave agreed to settle the dispute. Reynard, who knew the history of every Lyrian and Rivian family seven generations back, served as her advisor. No doubt I would find for the Cartwrights. They are in the right here, as regards the title to the land. Yet your grace must consider. The Mansfields have ever served the crown and never delayed payment of tribute. Whereas the Cartwrights... The Cartwrights are litigious charlatans who owe the royal treasury thousands. Many thousands. Oh shit. But the most impressive uh, thing is that Reynard knows the history of every Lyrian and Rivian family seven generations back. That's crazy. That's, that's impossible. Let Carvai keep the orchard, Grand March keep the orchard, Order the orchard to be divided. Well, we're obviously gonna give it to. to Manfield. Because he serves the crown, never delay payment, and these guys are. The other one is a charlatan. 
And let's not forget that Cartwright also burned uh, Minefield's mill. The orchard must go to the vassal unburdened by debt. This is what I prefer, said Meave. Thus I declare it Mansfield's. But the law clearly says... I am the law, Cartwright. Lord Cartwright moved to debate the matter further, but a snort from Reynard reminded him he stood before his liege. Mansfield, content, made an ample contribution to bolster Meave's force and the realm's defense. Ha ha ha! So you see, my dear Cartwright, justice has been served. You shouldn't be that happy, bro. He's gonna try to kill you. <laughs> so you see, my dear Cartwright, justice has been served. Maybe the treasure is here, otherwise I'm gonna need to buy that guy's map. But I think it's here, right? No, it's not. I think I can find the treasure if I don't buy the map. Uh, so should I whip the guy or buy the map? I mean, I'm gonna buy the map, I'm playing as a good guy. Where is that? Is it even here? A tree with two rocks and two benches or whatever these are. And the benches are here it is. An avatar. Oh. I paid 50 gold for that avatar. That I'm probably never gonna use. Do you think I have like infinite gold? On their way to the capital, Meave and company happened one fine day upon a lone rider. Had I been at her side, I would immediately have recognized his passionate gaze and altogether chivalrous mien. Identify yourself, sir, and your intent. Ake of Dinell, I am dubbed, and my design I never conceal. The good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man. And we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here. Drowners, ghouls, and other kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the gods' help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil and facing it in mortal combat. Who do we spy? A knight errant? Hmm. Just as likely a madman. How goes your hunt? Godspeed. How goes your hunt? Caught the trail of any monster? Monster? Too fair a term by far. An exceptionally vile worm has made its lair in nearby caverns. It is said to be the very distillation of filth. A slither in horror. A melange of the macabre. Its head, that of a wild cat of Ophir. Its maw full of spiked teeth. The wings of a bat it is said to have, the tail of a scorpion, and from it, a thick venom drips. Learned men call this variety a manticore, or mardiacore. Perhaps it will be most prudent, then, to send for a witcher. A witcher? <laughs> Soulless automatons they are, all, feeding on common folk's fears. 
What they demand gold to do, I perform without demand of any coin. Sir Egg, far be it from me to discourage you. Your endeavor is noble, no doubt. But from what I have heard, manticores are exceedingly dangerous beasts. To defeat this filth alone could be a difficult task, I'll not deny. Yet try it, I must. For it is what I have sworn before the gods. But how is he surviving if he's not asking for any gold or anything? Where does he have gold to eat? Sleep and, you know, exist? I shall help you if you then join us. Hmm. Ooh. We shall help you find and fight the Manticore, provided you then pledge to help us fight an even fiercer and filthier beast. Of course, my lady. Yet what manner of horror is it? A vipper? A griffin? A drake of some rare form? Were it only. Tis a beast of a thousand heads, covered in black armor, its fire consuming whole villages. Noble lady. I know bestiaries only in parts, yet I've seen some of the world, and never have I heard of such a terror. You need but look about you, and spot Nilfgaard's legions. Devastating. But you must forgive me, Your Grace. This struggle between realms is not one to which I can lay a hand. I insist. A manticore. How great is its appetite? How many men does it fell, in a moon, let us say? It changes. At a time when the horror broods, it may be as many as twenty. I see. As now you must. Nilfgaard, in my capital, could mean as many as twenty thousand felled. You live to fight evil, injustice, do you not? You can fight none greater than by doing so at my side. The Manticore, your grace, must fall first. As to what happens later, I shall need to consult the good book and petition the gods. If this guy looks OP, Ike of Denesle. Agreed, so be it. This monster, where lies its lair? Where does it prowl? To the north, my queen. A few leagues on. Let's go fight the Manticore. Not a scrap. A whole village, just one big grave now. Hallowed mother, look upon these stricken souls what suffered evil. Protect. Constant. Wait, but is he in my deck, or should I put him in the deck? Okay, so he's not in the deck. Let's check him out. Oh my God, what's going on here? Whenever an ally takes damage, strengthen self by one. And he has seven power. Not bad. And what's happening here? Ike Fury, human. If battling monsters. Ike Divine Inspiration. If you have Manticore Trophy on the battlefield. Ike Holy Warrior. If battling monsters and you have Manticore Trophy on the battlefield. And this is the Manticore Trophy. Okay, so he has different abilities. Depending on what's happening on the battlefield. So if battling monsters deploy damage an enemy by this unit's power. Whenever an ally takes damage, strengthen self by one. That's pretty good. This one. If you have anticore trophy on the battlefield. Whenever an ally takes damage, strengthen self by two. I think I like this one more. So let me understand, if I have Manticore Trophy, he's gonna change into this and he's not gonna have his deployability, right? Even if we're battling monsters. So if you if we're battling monsters and we have the trophy, he's actually gonna change into this one. Deploy damage enemy by this unit's power. Whenever an ally takes damage, strengthen self by two. Okay, so this is the best one. Okay, so this one is just in case we're not battling monsters. But we need a trophy. And the trophy, whenever an enemy appears on the battlefield, uh, damage it at random by one or two. Order move to the other row. 
This is a complicated card, to say the least. This is going to be the end for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. You can ask me anything you want in the comments. I answer to every single comment. Subscribe and hit the bell for more Tron Breaker. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace.